this person is from your town and he has burned a lot of fucking bridges yeah. right uh not too long ago we actually saw each other at a party after he fucked up and i hadn't talked to him in years um not because i'm angry at him i was like i just don't want to be around this person anymore but he, <laughs> he came to me he goes i don't know he goes hey bro like it's been a long time i really missed you and the first thing that came out of my mouth was like that's funny i haven't thought about you once <laughs> <laughs> cold yeah <laughs> and it's like hey yeah i just wanted to apologize like you know blah 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 like you know i just hope we could be friends again i was like well we're not gonna be friends. in five four three two one what's up everybody welcome to another episode of the genius brain podcast we hello ed park back here again because we shoot two in a day while we drink up and have some motherfucking fun yeah this is the only time i drink now same here yeah <laughs> i actually <laughs> so um when we first met was when I actually became a major alcoholic. <laughs> I wouldn't have known because yeah. I was a major alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you can't heal somebody who's going through the same yeah. shit as you. We drank a lot. We drank lot. so much. We drank a lot. So we first met and first thing we did was film Kim jong mm -hmm. um, uh becomes a rock star. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> we, we went, we we went straight to Tiggs. Tiggs. <laughs> Yeah, I remember I smashed there, dude. Yeah, I don't. I actually, every time I went to Tiggs, I was so smashed. I don't remember what Tiggs looks like. <laughs> like it was just a blur. I just remember me just you trying just to mack on these random girls like all the time, <laughs> just trying to talk to these girls. I think one of them was your friend too. Oh, of course. Yeah, <laughs> one of your fr his friends. Yeah, I think Seattle was, small, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was like probably one of your friends, and yeah. I don't even think I even found her that attractive. I was like, she seems fun, uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, I, oh wait, nah, okay. No, I'm not going to say, I know exactly what you're talking I know, about you know, now. I, I remember like a glimpse of that, but yeah. I remember the next morning I was like, why? <laughs> like, you were just drunk and horny as fuck. Hey man, to our 20s, <laughs> it was like when we can, we always felt that the hangover was worth it. I know. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's weird when you get older people, like, you know, our friends go like, I get way longer hangovers. Like, no, your hangover is the exact same. You just care yeah. more now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your hangover is the exact same shit. It doesn't affect you anymore. It's just before you would just soldier right through it. You, yeah. didn't, you didn't care, you know, like now I have some shit to worry about so I can't get smashed. Right. But right now I'm like slightly buzzed. And so I know like, hey, don't have another fucking three or four shots. You'll be dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I choose my oh, alcohol yeah. a lot better. For me, it wasn't even about the buzz. It was just, let's get fucked. Oh, like, yep. let's just get blacked out. Yeah, drinking in K-Town is just one of those things that it goes hand in hand. And coming of age. Yeah, it's like a coming <laughs> of age thing, right? Like I never did the like the Tommy girl thing or anything like that. I didn't really need to, but like um just going out to K-Town, eating a shit ton of food, getting smashed and coming back to the apartment and drinking some more. Or if we didn't do that, we would go to these speakeasies that uh, <laughs> that was open to like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning. And we would just stay there and drink all the fuck yeah. all night and then come back to the apartment and knock out till like 1 p.m. Dude, it was like, like I, I would do that in Korea where we'd be at the Norabang until the sun came up and then we'd go, go to bed. And then, um, you know, but I was living in Seattle at that time. And then I moved to L.A. where we first met. And then we, we lived in Koreatown. And I was like, holy shit, it's like Korea because... I'd be coming out of the Norabang and the sun was coming out. And then we'd go to 7 Eleven because it's still open and have their shitty ass pizza and mm -hmm. their like chimichangas rolling on the roller. This will love trash why. spaghetti. I have, yeah. <laughs> it's the funniest thing on earth, dude. Well, like, uh, so uh, David Cho took Anthony Bourdain to Sizzler and he explained it like the Koreans in K Town when they, let's have an American dinner. <laughs> that was, that was think, our idea of splurging. Yeah. So when we go have a fancy American dinner, we go to Denny's, right? And I have a spaghetti. <laughs> like, for for me, it was this joint called uh, JJ North in Sacramento, which was a buffet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the fancy dinner oh, for us. Oh, man. We had old country buffet up, up there, and that's where we would just go all out. My mom still peace. loves buffets, dude. It's so funny. Like when the pandemic happens, she's like, oh, <laughs> what am I going to have for dinner? I'm like, why do you dude. consistently eat at buffets? Dude, me and... uh. My friend Richard, we were in Arizona for the Christmas break. And as we were leaving, uh, we were trying to find a meal uh, for the road trip back to LA. And we found a Chinese restaurant as a Chinese buffet. And we were saying, like we parked in there and we got out and we went to the door and we were just like, man, should we do this? Like we were like really waiting. And I was like, we, I fucking love 
lamp buffet Chinese food. I don't know why. <laughs> like, it's like, I want this. And it's like, but it's like this is so irresponsible. <laughs> we just got back in the car and we didn't eat it. Like, That's so I can't fun. believe this day and age we really have to fight this shit. Like, I mean, there's a spot out in uh, Riverside. It was a, a joint called Ho Ho Walk. And it was, you know, the Panda Expresses before Panda Expresses were yeah. really popping, you know. Yeah. And they just did what Panda Express did better, just not with the same business model. <laughs> but, dude, I would eat there so fucking much to the point where the person would see me and they would just give me extra food. <laughs> that's how fat I was. Dude, that's same me. The, uh, this Hawaiian barbecue spot uh, in K-Town next to California Donut. Uh -huh. It just says Hawaiian barbecue. But it's just like they have Chinese food on a lamp, all that stuff, chow mein. I went there every day after work for a solid two years, every day. And they give mega portions, That's mega so portions. And then I have two spam musubis with it. I can't believe I'd eat that every night and finish it because on New Year's uh, Eve, because I'm like, well, let me cheat, right? Let mm. me just get off keto. And have that really shitty thing I ate every day that got me fat, right? So I went and picked it up. I ate a quarter of it, and it's still in the fridge. That's like, so funny. I ate a quarter of it, and I passed out at 10 p.m., and I missed the whole New Year's. I was at home by myself anyway. <laughs> That's fucking funny. It dude. made me so lethargically fucked up, or I got some weird MSG high. <laughs> you know what's so funny? Every time I went to work at the men's warehouse where I used to sell tuxedos, I would eat at L and L. <laughs> the guy. So if you guys are in the Elk Grove area, there was a, there, there used to be a Borders there. There's an L and L owned by, owned by this guy named Ping. Ping would see me eat there so much, I would order a regular, but he would give me a large because I ate there every time for lunch. Or he would give me a free drink. Like, you got to understand how big you are to the point where you just eat the same shit every yeah. day, only because the portions like, are so big. So, you're special to them. They you gotta they gotta give you back. Yeah, you know, give back to you for giving so much to them. You know, it's funny. We were just talking about earlier where, um, uh, and it only reminds me of this because the holidays just passed, but how, you know, with a lot of like younger, younger influencers, I don't know what it is like thematically that I've seen constantly is how some of these kids who become influencers are, I say lightly, fucking losers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, uh, I laugh because maybe I agree. <laughs> yeah. And what I mean by losers is, is how they treat human beings and people, right? Yes. Not because of like their hobbies or what they look like. That's shallow as fuck. I'm talking about how they treat people in the way they develop relationships and what they see as success and being a healthy person. I, this is why it's so important for people to have a strong foundation. In, in this city specifically, because everybody comes to the city to be recognized, right? Which kind of ruins the idea or, you know, it gives people a false idea of what people in LA are like because the people who grew up here are not like that. Right. Because um, you notice like not a lot of people from LA are from, mm -hmm. uh, in LA are from LA. Yeah. They're transients. Transients, maybe uh, two, the biggest fish in their pond and they got to move to LA and- so they got this, I don't know, fire under their ass to become somebody. I my, don't know. My, my to biggest. To get their fame. Because like my biggest issue with that was like when I would meet some of these people and, you know, close to my age or, you know, close to it or not. And one of my biggest tell signs is, and this is for a lot of other people, when you meet somebody and you go, oh, it's like, oh, like who are your friends that you kick it with? They go, oh, I don't really have friends. Get the fuck away from me. There's, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm finding out, once again, using this word thematically if you have gone 20, 30 years of your life, right? And you have hopped around different groups because they're the problem, most likely it's you. Yeah. It's a very weird thing that out of 30 years to 22 years, 21 years of living, you haven't made a single friend, right? And now that you come to this city, these people that you met for a hot second, because you guys gain clout with each other, you guys create content and you say, these are my best friends. <laughs> I love these people. I will do anything for them. Yeah. Bitch, you don't know these people at all. And the problem with that too, with these, because I always hear these complaints about people saying everybody's fake around me. The reason why they're fake around you is because you're fake. Yeah. You have developed relationships with people who are just like you. The difference is that you can't see it, that you're just like them. It's like when uh, Dave Chappelle's 
joke where when you start off with hey how are you doing and then you, <laughs> then the next person know the game's on fine how are you yeah right <laughs> and then you just have this useless conversation yeah and that happened so much when i first moved to la i mean i was born here but i'm not acting like uh, i'm born and bred like uh, i spent a lot of my life in well, washington the, the biggest difference <clears throat> for you two you still have your friends from back in the day. Yeah. You still have your friends. Just because you changed your geography didn't change your relationship with the people that right. helped build you up before you came here and you developed right. your, your career or your name for yourself. This is normal, good, healthy shit. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I see people who don't do that, it always makes me feel very weird. Like for example, right? We, we know this person. This person is from your town and he has burned a lot of fucking bridges, yeah. right? Uh, not too long ago, we actually saw each other at a party after he fucked up and I hadn't talked to him in years. Um, not because I'm angry at him. I was like, I just don't want to be around this person anymore. But he, yeah. <laughs> he, came to me, he goes, I don't know. He goes, hey bro, like it's been a long time. I really missed you. And the first thing that came out of my mouth was like, that's funny. I haven't thought about you once. <laughs> You know? cold <laughs> yeah and it's like hey yeah i just wanted to apologize like you know blah 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 like you know i just hope we could be friends again i was like well we're not going to be friends but we're we'll, we're civil like i'm yeah. always i'm gonna say what's up to you you know i'm gonna say hi to you and stuff i don't but you and i are not we're not friends yeah. i think know? um it, it it got lost because of the language he spoke mm. because um he was very enduring yeah. Right. He said, I love you a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and it sounded like he said it sincerely. Uh, but it got lost between like where like, you know, we're we're in the quote industry business. We were mm -hmm. all doing YouTube in one form or another. You know, I was behind the scenes and shit where um, I made this fucking <laughs> So me and Dan made this surprise video for them, mm. right? For their, like, it was like an anniversary show or something, right? And it was a surprise gift to them, right? Of Because I was doing videos from them from the start, from their very first show. Mm. Like, when they were just some rinky-dink kids band, <laughs> you mm. know? And then uh, over the years to where we come, you know? So I recorded everything they ever did. Mm. So we put together the surprise video and we send it to them. And then they, rec they asked me for changes. <laughs> they had edit requests, dude. For a kid. <laughs> I was like, me and Dan were like, fuck. That. We didn't do it. We were just like, what the? Like, this is a gift. Yeah. <laughs> That's so like funny. It's like you give somebody a gift, right? It's in this blue <laughs> gift wrap with a red bow. And they go, you know what? Can you give it back to me? But I want it green with a yellow bow. Thanks. <laughs> it's like, I will fucking slap the shit out of you. And like I said, like, it, this is the. That, that's exactly the moment, though, where we were like, it, this, sh whatever they say doesn't seem to ever matter. You know, no, behind who they really it's are. It's all empty words, you yeah. know? And when you look at somebody like that and you say, where's his friends? None. Right? Just all the. Every person that's been around that person is only people that he gained something from. Yes. Right? And when he, when he felt that he had gained enough, he would move on to the next person and the yeah. next person. The difference between me and them was that I'm very vocal. You don't do that to me and I'm not going to say something. Yeah. And I think he found out. I actually made him cry. <laughs> I made him cry because he was supposed to work on a project of mine. And, we, you know, and at this time, you know, because he was doing what we were doing at the same time, it was, it was good. Like I was all, I, Ed knows like I'm always down. I only work with people if I like them. It yeah. has nothing to do with whether well, you could bring me fame or anything else. It's like, do I like being around you? Let's do something. You, you sell yourself, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know why people think that you, they have a hand in your shit. It, 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 even it bothers me. It's like, you have zero charisma to what he's actually doing for you <laughs> on, in front of your camera. So I don't know. I'm always anyway. just like, I just like working with people that I enjoy, right? Because yeah. this, time is so short, right? And, and at the end of the day, I've already achieved more than I thought I could. So now it's about me just having fun with my friends. You know, obviously I have a monetary goal. I have these things, but I still have to enjoy the people around me. Yeah. And that's, that's always been my motive. Yeah. Even working with, with this guy, right? He, I had nothing to gain from him. He had everything to gain. But he was very good with his words. And I learned early on, even before him, but I kind of caught it on early with him, was like, oh, you're a likable person. You're not a good person. <laughs> you're very good at getting people to like you because you say the right things. 
but I don't know who you are. And I found that out when we worked on a project together yeah. and he left me out to dry and he wouldn't pick up my calls until I threatened him. And I was <laughs> like, Hey, I'm going to text you one more time. If you're not in front of my door in about half an hour, I'm going to go over to your place and beat your fucking ass because you owe me something. Yeah. And then he came back. Before we continue this podcast, let me talk to you about one of our wonderful sponsors, ShipStation, my friends. If you sell stuff online, you're definitely in the right business. More people are shopping online than ever. No matter how much you sell, ShipStation makes it super easy to manage and ship all your orders from all your sales channels faster. Yes, we're talking about faster and more efficient. And that's what I like. You get access to discounted shipping rates so you can save some money, son, no matter what you're selling Amazon Etsy on your own website. ShipStation funnels all your orders into one simple interface that you can manage from anywhere, even on your cell phone. It's no wonder ShipStation has more five-star reviews than any other shipping software. So you know you can trust them. I have been using ShipStation for quite a while now, and it's just a really super easy way to kind of manage all the different places that I'm shipping these products on. And it just makes my life easier and you'll love it too. Ship more in less time. Just use my offer code GeniusBrain to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in GeniusBrain. That's ShipStation station.com enter offer code genius brain make ship happen i went off on him he apologized started tearing up and he left <laughs> and i was like how fuck how you take advantage of me dude like we're supposed to be friends and this doesn't this is not even anything big yeah you know it, it's like when somebody feels secure in their relationship they just all of a sudden seem to stop caring or yeah. something or it, it's like but this part of your relationship is completely transactional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. like you paid him. Yeah, this, exactly. This is a business move. This yeah. has nothing to do with it's our friendship. It's not like at this point. if you're his friend, then you follow through. You have yeah. some integrity, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I I can understand like that hurt and that pain that he's probably going through because I failed. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. but you understand like the um, uh. I, I went through what he went through, but I never lost my relationship with you because friends don't have to say sorry. <laughs> right, Chingu? Yeah. I don't think he understands that. I don't think he understood that. Well, the, the difference between us when we worked together was like you had an inability to work with me because you were going through personal things and yeah. you let it be known. I can understand that. I can't hate you for that. Yeah. You didn't. We worked together and it didn't work out because you had a lot of stuff that you had to work through. Yeah. How can I hate you for that? Especially when you came to me and you confided in me. Who kind of fucking monster would I be? <laughs> it's like, hey, David, I'm going through a lot of stuff. I don't know what the fuck I want to do. And if I s still work with you, I can't complete this shit. And I'm like, you fucking bitch. <laughs> like, what kind of terrible person yeah. would I be? In his case, it was, I'm just going to ghost this dude. I owe him something. Yeah. It's paid. Uh, I don't, I feel like there's another project that's better. So I'm just going to let him wait. Right. How That's fucking true. dare you? you know? Yeah, I, I felt like, I mean, there's a number of people like that. They're all over LA and we can spot them out. Um, and they put people, they, they see people as expendable. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, I, I can't stand it. Where it's like, I'm only nice to this person because it can, it can, I can ride their coattails or I can find my climb his ladder mm -hmm. or their ladder let's say or i mean not that i have one at all i don't but uh i'm on the other end of being expendable a, a few times in la since mm -hmm. i've been here so yeah it, it closed off for me a lot of the uh, i i'm very aware of the people i'm reading when i meet them what they want from me <laughs> yeah you know when i'm hanging out with them and and i get really cross you know with people like when i read it when all I know at the end of it is that they just want me to make a video for them. I'm yeah. Like, I think that was really, I here. think for me, that was the hard thing for me to see when people would be around you because they knew your skill level and mm -hmm. what you could do because we would work together. But every time we worked, it was because it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. It would be like, yo, I have this idea. Let's film it right now. Let's and we do it overnight. And then the next day, like that, that, Apple commercial. I know. Fucking 2 million views overnight. We literally just thought of <laughs> something <didn't> <laughs> funny and then we moved on from it. You know? Yeah. Pyante style. Yeah. We got drunk at a Korean <laughs> barbecue. 
<laughs> and they're like, dude, what if we parody the shit? Me, Dan, and yeah. Ed are just cracking the so fuck up. We used Dan's Konglish. And that's the lyrics. That's how he speaks Korean. <laughs> exactly. And then we created Pyonte style. You yeah. know, you know what I mean? And that was purely out of fun. You know, it's like if I don't have fun with you, why the fuck do you think magic's gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, like how? Yeah. And sometimes too, we would do things and may not do that well. It didn't matter because I got what I wanted out of it, and we had fun doing it. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. And then, and then you have other people who I know would try to work with you, and they're like, "Oh, David didn't have to pay you." It's like, yeah, because we're having fun. Your shit's a chore. I fucking live with the guy, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I. Yeah. We share everything together. Yeah. Not only that, I know you got sponsored and you won't even fucking pay me <laughs> for some shit. Like, you would have to deal with some of the most so cheapest, shiestiest bullshit. YouTubers, dude. It was so funny. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not even funny. I felt irritated. So, so I did that video for JV and three other dudes. And one of the dudes hit me up later because it was probably the best fucking video he's ever had on his channel. Mm -hmm. And he hits me up like, oh my God, I love your video. It's doing great. I want to give you this opportunity to make my <laughs> next music video and I want to give you $50 for it. Duh. Oh my God. At this point, I was making $50 an hour at the corporate job I was working at. That's hilarious. I'm like, this fucking bit. And I was so upset. I actually went to Abe and told him to reply for me. Wow. I was like, I can't, I'm not going to deal with this shit. Like, yeah. this is. Yeah, I, I'm speechless almost to a point. Like, I don't understand why people really, maybe I'm ex, ex See, this is that what I energy hate. where people kind of like want to take advantage. Well, this is what I hate. Like these people who are these creatives, right? They undervalue what a director, a great film, pro this, this is, there's a value. And I mean, there's people who just aren't that great right now, who just need the experience. Those are the people you approach. You yeah. don't approach somebody who's already established that has, that has already gone through Thick and thin and hell to to create the stuff that he's already created that has his style that knows what he's doing to say I have an opportunity for you <laughs> suck my dick that's my opportunity for you get to suck my dick now get the fuck out of here yeah and I would see this a lot with creators right and for me too like sometimes with these kids like I just want to create for you Bob for free I was like that's cool but you suck so you know I rather you get better do your own projects and I'll pay you you know. Yeah, even sometimes like to other creators because they're fucking creators. Yeah. I'd be like, I'll teach you how to do it. They didn't want to learn. They just wanted me to just fucking do it. <laughs> Instead of, and quite possibly just for free too. And it's just like, get, you know, you don't have to pay rent too here. You know, you're in my apartment, this thing you're in with yeah. where we're having this meeting. <laughs> like, it, it's, it, there's just this weird balance too. Like I remember this one person who got really upset at me because I paid them to for, for photos, right? Paid them. And I put up the photo and they're like, hey, you need to tag me. And I'm like, <laughs> and I wrote back. I was like, I was like, oh, sh I was like, cool. Give me my money back. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know contractually I had to tag you. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking about because I don't really tag that much. In, I only started tagging when people started getting butthurt. I didn't know about this. Anyone who ever gets butthurt about not getting tagged are, are it's this level of, I'm going to say, I guess the word is narcissism. I don't know. Yeah. They're, I met someone who was so butthurt that um, the Koreatown Instagram page, <laughs> it's run by Stevie's cousin, mm. um, didn't tag her article that she wrote for Hypebeast. It's like, you know, the fact that they're sharing your article, like your article's already being read. It's on Hypebeast, yeah. right? It's like, she was so upset that no one's going to know who, who On the K-Town Instagram. Yeah. It's like, yeah, on the Koreatown, it's like, hey, these people are gonna get to know, isn't that the reason why you wrote this article? So people experience Koreatown and now the Koreatown Instagram is sharing it. She was just so incensed, like, and could not fathom, like, that this Instagram page they wouldn't tag her. They didn't even, it's not like they took credit for your writing. And when they link to your article, it says written your by name. you. Yeah. What the fuck are these? That's what I'm saying, it's just odd level of entitlement. I don't know what social media has done or maybe people have always been like this and social media just exacerbated the situation, you know, even further. But like, you know, you're telling this story about, um, can we say? <laughs> well, if you want to go through the work later to bleep her name out, well, let's just say uh, the girl from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Okay. <laughs> I met this girl a long time ago uh, in Vancouver, BC through this Asian American show and Clara was doing a show. 
there. And we carpooled. She flew to Seattle because we're friends. And we drove to, to Vancouver together and she did the show. That's where I first met her. And um, cool. And, you know, when you're at that time, this was like 2011, right? YouTube's getting hot for Asian Americans as a medium to express themselves. You know, we finally had a space. And so it was getting really hot then. And um, good for her. She jumped on that train and um, she got a good following. And so she would fly down to L.A. after I had moved down to L.A. Um, to we'd have dinner and then have me in a video. But I would never shoot her videos. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I would never direct. I would never do her work, you know, and it came to a point where like, I'm willing to give advice and stuff. But then um, it always felt like she was just taking a whole lot from me um, and her subscriber count is growing. And that's fine. It's like I'm I'm there to help, and then uh, she had asked for Khalif's contact, and I got them, and I invited to a party that she wasn't originally invited to to come and meet Khalif, and then she got him in one of her videos. And that video is doing well, whatever it grew. Literally after that, unfriended me on all kind of social media, no contact ever again. And how fucking odd. Yeah, and now she's. It was like after she hit a hit over a million subscribers and all of a sudden I'm just like expendable yeah expendable it's like I don't get but her over being unfollowed because maybe my content's a whack right yeah <laughs> maybe whatever. what I'm saying on Facebook was so fucked up that she had to unfriend me or whatever but it was just literally like uh after just literally just taking 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 and there was really no relationship you weren't really my friend then at all it was just oh 100% <laughs> that's what I'm saying like I got to look at somebody's past. Like, I don't even know this person like very well at all, but it's like, who are your friends? Let's just ask that. Mm -hmm. Like, who are your friends? Who, who do you have around from wherever you're from? And what do they say about you? Right. Are they your, your network? Yeah. Or is your friends, your network? And that's about it. You know, this, this idea that you could just take from some people and then just dump them off. Like they're nothing when they've helped build who you are is very odd. Yeah. I don't understand like how ungrateful that is. And these are the same people that are complaining that they can't make friends and that people are terrible. And these are the type of people whenever they introduce me to their friends is this is my video guy. <laughs> oh my God. What the fuck? <laughs> my name is Ed Park. Yeah. Yeah. It's just be like my video guy. And there's just these stream of people, these types that keep introducing me as their video guy. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I said earlier to say very lightly. Fucking losers. <laughs> like, socially inept, terrible people. Yeah. Like usually those things don't go hand in hand, but it seems to be the case here, right? Like how do you introduce somebody by their title? Because what you're trying to show is like, this is what this person is worth to me is when you say that. You strip them away from their humanity when you don't even tell them their fucking name. How fucking dare you? Like yeah. if somebody came up, like this, this is why I had an issue with back in the day where when YouTube started years ago, uh, a lot of stand-up comics hated YouTubers. They thought that mm. what we did wasn't great. Yeah, These people didn't know that. that I'm originally a stand-up comic that went to YouTube because stand-up comedy wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't doing well. I was a, I was a pretty average stand-up comic. But it was like, you have to make a jump between a club mm -hmm. to a fucking late night show or like Netflix yeah, or HBO special. How? Yeah. You, so I had to build my own path. YouTube was that in between. Exactly. I took my old stand-up that didn't work, that didn't hit very well. I chopped it up, made it faster, and it was funnier on this three minute yeah. video than it was when I was doing stand up. I still had to go on stage and bomb. <laughs> and then know? they started like hating on you for being an editor. Yeah. It's like, bitch, hey, editing is a fucking solid <laughs> profession, okay? <laughs> Don't you dare fucking talk shit about editing. Yeah. <laughs> but there was, there was a Korean comic who I actually thought was really fucking funny. Yeah. And I actually met him uh, through Dumbfounded. Yeah. It was at uh, it was at Berkeley. We were actually put on the same bill together to do a show, and I did better than him, mm -hmm. right? Not because I'm a YouTuber. I wasn't really well known at the time. I just did stand up, and I don't think he knew that. Yeah, you know, maybe he didn't, he didn't expect that. Yo, from he you. fucking killed too. By the way, he was fucking hilarious, right? Yeah, I was dying laughing at his jokes, and I liked the guy. I was like, man, this guy's so fucking funny. And then lo and behold, backstage, and Abe is there too. And then Dumb's like, hey, yo, this is my guy, right? And he's a traditional stand-up comic, another Korean guy. I was happy to be introduced to a great Asian comic. I was like, hey, what's up, bro? I'm Dave. He goes, sup? And I put my hand and he just walks away from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
And what? I, and I had a really bad temper back in the day. Yeah. Because I was fresh out of Sacramento. You know, so I was like, yo, what the fuck? And then I, I literally said, I'm walking up to him. Abe grabs me. He's like, hey, you can't do that. I'm like, what the fuck this guy just did? And the guy just kind of like got a little weird, you know, because I wanted to sock him in his fucking face. Yeah. It's like, yo, I'm over here just trying to introduce myself. And later on, I hear through other people. He's like, yeah, he, he just, you know, doesn't think that what you do is real comedy. I was like, you just saw me do a stand-up set and I smashed. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> The same crowd. Nobody knows who the fuck I am here. So what's with the disrespect? And I could understand because we were both fat Asian comics. <laughs> <laughs> we look very much okay. alike. And I think he did like, uh, I didn't know at the time, but he did a Kim Jong-il thing too. Right. And I did a Kim Jong-il thing. Right. So, but I didn't steal it. Kim Jong-il is a real person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not your thing. Yeah. How many people impersonated Clinton? Exactly. Like <laughs> I didn't know that was your, my bad. Yeah. I didn't know who the fuck you were to that night. You know? And all he had to do was just introduce himself or maybe talk to me and it would have worked out. Because for me, when I, when, I'm like not one of those stand-up comics back in the day that would sit there and in the green room and wait for my step. I wanted to go and see what people did because it would get me hyped because yeah. these people would make me laugh. You know, yeah. I, was, I was more of a fan if anything else. And I think when, when that happened, I was so pissed because people like him would look down at what I, what yeah. I would do. And so we did another stand-up thing where uh, he was also doing a set. And I didn't really care at this point. This is like a year, years went by. And also, uh, my favorite stand-up comics were there, the Fang Bros. And so, <laughs> <laughs> dude, they did. They, dude, they killed it so good that nobody was laughing. So <laughs> I, I know. Was that at the Ice House? Was that the Ice House? It was the Ice House one. And there was, oh, I think I was that though. <laughs> there, there was there was the Ice House one too, but there's uh, another one uh -huh, that they did. Okay. And so, <laughs> hello, hello, my friends. Before we continue, let's talk about one of our dope sponsors, better help. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? My friends, let me tell you something. I've been there before. You and I, we're sadness buddies. There's a lot of things that we have to address that we choose to ignore, but guess what? With better help, you can start communicating with somebody in under 48 hours and it will help assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Therapy has a weird stigma to it, my friends, and it doesn't have to. If you need that help, you should go and get it. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service available for clients is worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. You won't be left hanging dry. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Genius Brain listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash genius. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash genius. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing that right. And my set wasn't that great because I signed up for this thing super fucking late, right? Yeah. And um, I didn't prepare a set. So I had to like just kind of go through my head of like, okay, I got to do a, they're only giving me five minutes. I don't know how to, five minute sets are very fucking hard if you guys ever do stand up. Yeah. Cause you have to somehow be hella funny in a short time without doing long storytelling. So I'm like, okay, I got to knock this shit out the park. I did this one little bit. It killed, felt really good. Um, but prior to that, I was pissed off because they knew at the time what it meant to call somebody a YouTuber to somebody who was doing stand-up comedy. Yeah. And I wanted to be recognized as a stand-up comic at the time because that's all I wanted. Yeah. And it said, stand-up comic, all these other people, and then my name, YouTuber. <laughs> and that person who made that flyer did it despite me. I know. Because they know how I felt about that. Yeah. And they wrote YouTuber on it. And I was like, I'm going to kill this set and you're <laughs> going you're gonna to fucking respect me. And they did after, after I did the set. Yeah, dude. So, I, I can't tell you how many people, like, after you hosted Collab, like, and, and that other show at the Avalon Theater. Oh, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. people, like, even on my Facebook feeds are, like, I'm reading, David show should do more stand-up com Like, does David Show ever consider doing stand-up <laughs> like comedy? Can, Nobody can. knew that you were a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I just remember, yeah, like, I'm telling you, like, we, we refer back to that motel pool room. Yeah. Like, you killed that set. You can do it. In this, in a small little fucking smoker room. You know? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, for me, it was a pride thing, right? Because yeah. I started doing stand up when I was 16 and I developed this, you know, at the time, like very subpar skill. I'm probably nowhere near as good as I was before because I haven't done it in so long. But having to build all this stuff to go through the shit that I had to go through to even be considered a decent stand up comic, like, oh, he could kind of do this. 
And for somebody just to just try to take that away from me because I am not what they expect me to be, it, it really hurt me. Yeah. You know I mean, it's like they probably it, think that you didn't, you know, hit the ropes like they did. Yeah. They probably think like you took the easy route. Or some I told the story on um on this podcast before, but uh, when I it was my first night ever doing uh, stand up at the Ice House. Yeah. And there was this guy. Um, he knew that I was a, a YouTuber, and I got on the card because of my YouTube clout. And they're like, okay, well, this guy, let's see what he could do. And I did pretty decent, right? I didn't, I, when I look back at the set now, it's pretty terrible. Yeah. But people were laughing. I don't know why, but Ice House <laughs> is very forgiving like that. This guy goes up, zero laughs. Terrible stand up comedy. Do you know what he said to me before that? What? We're, 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 we're kind of chilling in the back, and he goes, like, oh, so you're the YouTuber, right? And I already know when somebody says that to me, what they're trying to say. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I've been doing stand up since I was 16. I'm 24 at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, eight years already. That's the kind of shit, like, I support, like, if you want to use resentment as motivation, that shit works. Yeah. <laughs> That's when it works. <laughs> yeah. And so this guy comes up and he goes, hey, like, he goes, like, I've been doing stand-up for three years now. So if you got, if you need any pointers, just let me know. I'll oh teach you what's God. up. And that's what I'm talking about, about the people who look at people as expendable things or as, an, as a hierarchy. This guy, must, like, read you and thought you were somehow beneath him yeah. or something. And, like, I, and trust me, like... When I'm in co comedy clubs, I want to laugh so bad. I think sometimes, like, I even laugh at shit that's not funny, just because I'm in a good mood to be <laughs> yeah. in a comedy club. That's how much I used to love stand up, yeah. you know. And <laughs> it's just like, why are you at church stinking it up, man? Yeah, You're like we're trying to laugh. Here. Exactly. So like, I'm cracking up at the stand up comedy club, and he got zero laughs, you yeah. know. And I didn't laugh at his because he already pissed me off. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, fuck this guy, right? You want to hear the saddest shit about that? After he saw me do my set, I did really well, or decent, anyways, right? <clears throat> well better than him yeah, better than him anyways <laughs> who messages me on facebook and is like hey like whenever you go up next time like hey we should do a stand-up thing together <laughs> you want to do a duet <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to do shows together it's like fuck you yeah. you literally just insulted me but that's what it goes back to that theme of like people only want to be around you if they can get something out of yeah. you yeah and it's like you just had to treat me like a decent human being and you wouldn't even give me that I mean, like I said, I'm, it could be the way that people see the quote unquote game of, I don't know, navigating life in LA, uh, in the entertainment business or whatever, because I see that behavior all the time around people who are established, but I also see it in young people. Yeah. Because like uh, when I go to collab shows, like even some collab volunteers, they're just kids. They start behaving that way. And it's just like I just want, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, check yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, I'm a I'm a nobody really, right? And I'm not going to tell. Like I I just work, okay. And um, I just showed up to collab because I used to volunteer too. And um, I'm having a smoke outside, and this guy who's a volunteer just starts. I don't know how he's bragging, but he's bragging about his accomplishments, which don't mean anything. <laughs> But he's just, you know, a PA at this thing, and he's at, and he's talking to me like he can help me get into the, my foot in the door. Oh my god! You know, and and the thing is, I'm just like, I'm just some fucking guy having a smoke, and to him, yeah, maybe I am a nobody, and that's why he's just acting like this to me because I'm just a nobody, and he's just kind of, you know, I'm gonna, he's never gonna meet me again, and he's just gonna like, think I he made like, an impression. Always treat people with the same level of respect that you want to be treated with, right? Especially if they're just decent people. Like if they're trash, treat them like trash. Whatever, right? And it's it's like this level of self-importance that people want to feel so bad. You know, that's why yeah. like these kids who are like 12 years old, they're giving a, a life advice on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> like, you were what? just, you were a sperm like two hours ago. How the fuck do you want to give, you, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I, and, I, I, and, and what you mean, I, I, why I laugh so hard at like the way you describe these people as losers is because they act so hard like winners. Yeah. And you notice actual winners don't have to. They never do. Yeah. Say shit about what they've won. <laughs> you know, I just talked about this too. Like I did a TikTok, little quick little TikTok rant. And it was just literally about like 2020 was the year of people putting up fucking motivational quotes. Yeah. From the biggest losers I've ever met in my life. <laughs> you know, like these motivational quotes are like, listen, if you wasn't hustling in 2020 during pandemic, that means you don't really want it. Like, <laughs> bro, you still work at Walmart <laughs> as a greeter. You're 32. You started when you were 18. How dare you? 
fucking dare you write this motive? Who the fuck are you talking to right now, right? And I think a lot of people, they project this stuff because yeah. they know they don't have it. Yeah. And they want to be important before doing important things. Right. And that is problematic. Yes. You know what I mean? And I hate seeing it. It's like, I, I keep saying, there's a this is one guy I fucking love. And he's somebody who's actually very talented. Um, But he always has to post stuff shitting on what other people do, right? Like, y'all don't do what I do. I'm out here, man. Huh? I'm a I'm a CEO. I'm a CEO too, guy. It's called Davis So Comedy. Yeah. It's a camera and one person. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm on my fucking email. I, I write CEO of Davis So Comedy <laughs> as a joke. Yeah. You, you know? But there's like this level of self-importance that people want to feel before doing important things. Yeah. Because it's that idea of faking it till you make it. They want to say that because they're misinterpreting this this very simple advice that people say. They go, you have to project what you want in life. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're misinterpreting you speak that. Speak into the universe. Yeah, speak shit. it into the universe so it'll exist. That's bullshit. Yeah. You have to do stuff in order to succeed. Just because you say things, it doesn't mean it'll happen. You That's know? some Wonder Woman 84 shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. like, I, I always saw this was like, if, if you ain't hustling with, or if you're not with me, you're against me type of shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is the dumbest fucking advice I've ever heard in my life because you're expecting people to quote unquote hustle, but it goes in that mentality of if you're not helping me, you're useless to me, Yeah, which is terrible. This is why you don't have friends. This is why you can't develop personal relationships because everything is transactional to you. Yeah, I have friends who aren't business owners who don't have a hustling bone in their body and all they do is work their regular nine to five and they're happy as fuck. And they're still really good friends of mine. Yeah. They're not helping me build my future. They don't say supportive things. And in fact, because they're from Sacramento, I'll be talking to them. They go, what's up, homo? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, guy? I just, yeah. I just okay. I can't say hi. You know? But those are the people that I know. They have no reason to hustle hard and they're happy the way that they are. Yeah. And you look at people as if they're expendable, that they're only there to help you achieve whatever the fuck you want. And if they don't fall in line, you get to cut them out. You're a trash human being. Yeah. I hate those stupid, stupid memes because they're useless. They're not applicable. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I had beef with this guy in Seattle. He's a Christian rapper. God, this fucking guy really had a problem with paying me to do videos for him. I don't know. Even though I, I only ever make. Fucking Lecrae. No, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not Lecrae. But, no, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this guy had a problem with buying me lunch too. Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I keep me meeting people like him out there, like someone who has a real problem with paying me fairly. Um, and he gets, they get incensed that they didn't get a better deal <laughs> rather than me getting paid fairly. You know? That's so funny. Man. Yeah. It, it, I had to uh, work with somebody like that and they didn't understand why I was like, people like that do this really um, problematic thing where um, they want free work mm. and they get upset that the free work isn't as good as they wanted it to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I Dude, mean? like, uh, yeah, I mean, they, it's a really weird logic that these motherfuckers have because, like I said, the birthday gift, the, not the birthday gift, the anniversary gift video where they ask for ch edit changes, mm -hmm. right? There was a, another instance where like this motherfucker was bragging about how much money he had saved up in cash. He's like, what, do you, what should we do? What should, I go, should I go to like Vegas? Oh, bro, I remember this. You it was at the there, apartment. At the apartment. Dude, this is the funniest fucking thing. And I was like, bro, don't you owe me like $2,000? <laughs> <laughs> This, I mean, this person is so, it's like he's like a very socially inept. That we we've accepted this about him, right? Yeah. But this is the funniest thing. You know, when somebody says something so stupid and fucked up that the nicest, quietest person in the room roasts this guy. So <laughs> he's sitting there. He's like, "Dude, I got all this cash that I don't know how to spend. Uh, I, I don't know what to do with it." Blah blah blah. And this dude, this is Paul. Paul Kim is the nicest guy you'll meet. Yeah. He looks at him and he goes. You fucking take us to Vegas so we could party, bro. <laughs> like, are you just fucking flaunting your money in front of us right yeah. now? You know, and then this fool literally felt bad. He goes, okay, well, look, when we when we go somewhere, like, I'll pay for your guys' food. And he goes, no, take us to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> like, Seriously. Like, you got a mill in cash? He goes, if I had a mill in cash right now, I'd take all of us on a trip. Well, I thought we're boys. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
you know like how dare you flaunt this when people yeah. are still struggling we're in an apartment living with like six yeah. roommates literally <laughs> he's just like i don't know what to do with he's all like, this money we're all huddled here like because like wow we're friends yes that's one aspect of it but we <laughs> save a lot of money bro <laughs> yeah what the fuck you think we're drinking at yeah. this apartment and not at a bar right why now why do you think i had to win a soju contest <laughs> So we can have free booze. <laughs> it goes back to the idea of people who are just socially R word. <laughs> yes, R word. <laughs> you know, it's, socially it, young. It's it's very hard to deal with, and, you, and and at a certain point, like you feel bad for them because nobody either taught them better, but at the same time, it's like, why do I have to deal with this? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Why am I this guy that has to teach this person how to behave like a human being? Yeah. <laughs> I remember like when we were, ta- we were in a circle talking about old church stories like we always do. Mm-hmm. And this is at the apartment. And then he got, this guy's like, oh, I used to go to church camp. I remember those old songs. I can sing your love forever and whatever. And I was like, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Interesting about this guy. I didn't know. And, he's, and then he goes, hey, if I still go to church and pay offering, is that a tax break for me? <laughs> Fucking. And he started asking how offerings work. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Dude, I, I think this guy's an alien. Yeah. He's a fucking alien. Like, do you do you, if you ever meet this person, you'll understand what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> He's not a bad dude, by the way. He has no evil yeah. bone in his body, but we have to deal with this. He just doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Okay, so I don't play basketball. You, your brother, and Khalif. Keep convincing me to go play ball with you guys. Because we're friends. Gonna, yeah, he's, you're, he's gonna, Cleve's going to open up the gym uh, in Cerrito. Let's all go. Let's play. I'm like, guys, I don't play. And you're like, encourage me to go. I got in the car and I went. The whole ride, I'm sweating because I'm like, I'm going to fucking suck at this shit, right? Yeah. And by the way, when we play <laughs> basketball, I stopped playing basketball competitively years ago, even before I met him <laughs> because it wasn't fun. Yeah. People get mad. You guys know when we play pick a ball, when you're at a gym, you always have an asshole that thinks he's the coach. You have another asshole that thinks he's going to the NBA and people get mad and they <laughs> play seriously. I stopped liking that shit. So we get to the gym and I'm, I'm playing the best I can, <laughs> I guess. And this guy starts talking shit like out loud. I can hear him. It was Jason Chen. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, man, it sucks. Holy shit, he can't play. Why is he playing? Like, he's literally belittling this dude who, number one, Ed is fat as fuck at this point, right? <laughs> Very unathletic fat, you know? I've played ball my whole life, right? And this is before knee injuries and everything. This is, I, my knees were fucked up. My ankles were fucked up. Yeah. So I can't play as good as I used to. But Ed doesn't play. And we know this. He knows this too. <laughs> Jason, you fucking knew this, right? Jason knew that he can't play ball. And he's verbally just destroying this dude when we're all just trying to have fun. But out of nowhere, all of a sudden I hear, he doesn't play ball. <laughs> he, leave him alone. <laughs> he doesn't play basketball. <laughs> he started cursing him out. Like, I was like, damn, <laughs> like, thanks for coming for my I got rescue. so <laughs> fucking mad. Like I said, I love Jason Chen, but I got so fucking mad at him because we are here as friends. Read the fucking room, <laughs> you fucking pasty, sweet little fuck. I love you. But that was the one time Jason pissed me off because we are all here as friends and we're doing this just, and it, I, we had to convince him to come out. He knew this, you know, and the guy's literally telling Ed how much he sucks, how bad he is. And I just got fed up with it. And I was like, oh, are you trying to bully somebody right now? You know, and I hate bully. Yo. And it, it, for one thing too, it's just like, knowing look it's just like come on man why are you doing this to me right now yeah. <laughs> it's like i already feel bad that i suck yeah <laughs> not only that it's just like what are you trying to do yeah is exactly. it gonna make him play better <laughs> yeah you know and so the funny thing about that was too is like and the reason why this should be very apparent that nobody's playing serious khalif was a pro yeah. international <laughs> ball player and he's playing with us losers yeah. <laughs> right Khalif is passing the ball only. Yeah. He knows we're not that good. And P- Khalif is playing it down a little bit. And you just hear this five foot one little geisha <laughs> screaming at this fat, fat dude for not knowing how to play ball when it's already known. Yeah. Like he's missing shots and we're just having fun. I don't even have basketball shoes. On. No. <laughs> you know? And so I remember I got 
pissed. I was just like yelling at him. Like I not only that, like retaining the basketball still was even b- before that. You were living uh, before we moved in together. I was just visiting, and you like fucking broke your ankle. Yeah, I smashed shit. it to pieces. You smashed your ankle, and your ankle is the size of a wall- watermelon. Mm-hmm. I thought I could carry you up the stairs. I could, I couldn't. But um, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you tried though. My legs. <laughs> I tried. Um, we fucking carted you around in the giant orange count at Costco when you had to go to Costco. You're fucking handicapped. Yeah. But you show up to an ISA basketball tournament anyway. <laughs> yeah. And you go one on one with Jason. This guy, <laughs> he made a video like, like schooling you, oh, yeah. like balling with, you up with a broken can, ankle. <laughs> can I tell you this too, by the way? I'm like 260 pounds. <laughs> I actually <laughs> fractured my ankle in multiple places and I tore all the ligaments in my ankle. That's how bad it was. Because <laughs> I went up for a fucking layup and I landed on Casey's foot and I shattered my ankle. Yeah. It was that bad. I actually have only about like 60, 70% mobility in this ankle to this day. That's how bad that injury is. And this fool's like over here trying to post me up in a video and I'm like, are you exploiting my fucked up yeah. ankle? This is what we're, the, the theme of what we're talking about, if you're getting it so far, it's expendability and exploiting. Yeah. <laughs> Like, even if you're fucking down. <laughs> yeah. This is just funny stories about him. Like I said, once again, I love Jason. I want people to understand that that Jason is not a bad person. No, he's, he's not. Socially he's socially just fucking weird sometimes. He's a bad person. Yeah, I just remember that too. Because like, when I, when I saw him like getting mad at Ed, like it just, because I'm a big guy. Jason's smaller than me. And I wanted him to feel like, you don't want you want to know what it feels like to get bullied? Hey, old boy mirror. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what it was. It's like, you want to bully somebody? I was yeah. like, you know, I could beat your fucking ass right now right but i'm not doing it so leave him alone you know i get a little protective <laughs> you know yeah, like, no thank you for that <laughs> thank you for that you know and if somebody treated no, jason that do. way i would have done the same thing for exactly. jason you know and that was the weird part for me it's like you're shorter than me i mean you're obviously extruding this complex out loud <laughs> like, and i'm like i just don't know how to process what's happening <laughs> dude one of the funny i'm not sure maybe i told the story on on, on the podcast before but uh, Joseph Vincent also saw me really angry once right. and it was uh, this is also Jason this is the first time they both saw me angry because I'm a very jolly happy dude yeah. like I talk shit but I'm always 99% I'm really happy but we are playing ball it was at uh, 24 hours it was super late at night I actually gave Joseph Vincent something called Jacked uh, and he was pre-workout? on this pre-workout, the pre-workout yeah. and he was fucking zooming right <laughs> we're playing ball this one white dude comes up and he uh, checks me super hard because I was getting this dude on the court. He fucking shoulder checks me in the middle of my chest and I go flying. I get up. I see fucking pure red. This yeah. is us playing basketball. I start cracking my fist into the fucking wall immediately. Just, <laughs> and I'm like fucking pissed. And the whole game, everybody stares. I start walking towards him like about to whoop this fool's ass. He goes, bro, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's all good, man. And I, a, <laughs> and I just gave him a hug right in the middle. I started hugging him. Yeah. I was like, hey, it's all good, dude. And then Jason looks, he goes, what the fuck was People that? People don't understand that, Han. Yeah. It is the, there is a split personality. It is it is binary nature where it's extreme hate and a lot of love, but it's both at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. And people can't understand that contradiction about the Han. It makes you seem like a crazy person. A crazy person. So, I mean, so uh, this is in 2017, January, right? I remember this date because it's a really crazy story. Uh, I just left LA and now I'm in Washington, mm-hmm. right? And I think I'm a failure because I'm leaving LA, my dreams of being a director and all that shit. And I'm in this podunk town now, right? Yeah. And I'm trying to process and deal with having to live here now. So I know go on this fool's Instagram and he just did a collage of this guy that I love that came to his gas station. (laughs) It's this dude that would never fucking pass him money to his head. Ever. (laughs) And Ed's hand is out like this as if he's asking for a loaf of bread. (laughs) But he somehow manages to uh, just throw the money next to his head. It was my coping me- mechanism to have to deal with that shit was to just laugh. This yeah. is the if you if you're gonna hear our old boy review, it's about laughing mm-hmm. in the midst of all this pain. But um, so I'm at I'm in this podunk town and it fucking sucks and I'm dealing processing like how do I live here right? And I'll go to Safeway <laughs> because I want like their shitty Chinese food. 
you know i don't know i keep mentioning shitty chinese yeah. food under a lamp warms the soul so i go over there uh and i'm i'm probably looking for something and i hear this voice and it goes if you want the chicken and general then it's gonna be 509 right and in my head i'm like wow they actually have a chinese like chef here mm -hmm. <laughs> cooking the food because those are really good like despite my impression like, it was actually really good <laughs> yeah and I turn to look, and it was just this white lady. And she's telling customers who are making order, like, you want the combo C? And she's doing a really good Chinese accent, right? What the fuck? And, but for me, just, um, you know how I grew up out there, yeah, all yeah, white yeah. high school, and the way they mocked me in my A little traumatic. Yeah. Like, I got triggered really fucking hard, and I'm going I'm to confront this bitch, <laughs> like, straight up. Uh-huh. And, and she didn't see me. So when I walked up to her and obviously she saw an Asian face, she went pale. Like, yeah. And I said, do you talk like that all the time? Or are you making a joke? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, um, uh, um, and I was like, if you talk like that all the time, it's fine. Like, I can't blame you. You know? And then somebody, she's like, I'm sorry, lad. So I was like, <laughs> can't do this shit. He do lay low mo. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> But she starts going off like, this is America and I can say whatever I want. Like, you can't like blah, 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 all this shit. Oh, perfect. Then I'm like, hey, give me the number five, cunt bag. Yeah. <laughs> like, and now the customers around are mm -hmm. literally seeing this happen. This Asian guy walk up mm -hmm. in, like in the middle of this lady doing this bit. And, and they're, it's just super awkward for them. And she's like, I know Chinese people and they're my friends and I love them and, and I'm just That's like... That's a sign of a racist right there. And I'm just like, cool. You know, but this isn't like Super Bowl Sunday when you're at home with your friends. You're in a fucking business. You're at Safeway and you have yeah. a Safeway name tag on right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And she was like, you can't, uh, you can't stop my freedom of speech and my First Amendment rights and all this shit. And, and then I was just like, man... I've just had enough. There's no chain in this girl. And yeah. I was just like, whatever. And I turned around and walked away. And then she goes, I don't hate anyone. I love everybody. I can love you too. So I turned around and I walked up to her and I said, can I give you a hug? <laughs> and she just gave me this big fat hug and she started bawling in my arms. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Got, I didn't mean to offend you. Yeah. I didn't know this was offensive. Yeah. And then I was like, I just said, I love you too, and you're not a racist. Yeah. It's okay. You know, she was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the middle of Safeway in the fucking deli. And then everybody just goes, <laughs> No, nobody was. That's the yeah. thing. Nobody was there. Everyone bounced because it was so, so fucking awkward. awkward when we were fighting. She so, went she went on the defense mode immediately. Yeah. Instead of saying like, oh, shit, I fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me at that point too, like I saw every instance where I could have fucking did anything to this bitch. Yeah. For, you know? But I don't know what the fuck. And I'm just calling it the Han or whatever. I Or Christianity, to be honest. I don't yeah. know. That, I chose to love. Yeah, yeah. The two extreme binaries, like I had a choice. And I did the most opposite thing like I would have done because of the trauma I have with these motherfuckers. That's so crazy because like when I see that, when you're starting telling me the story, I'm like, I picture this woman just her nuts and bolts just fucking flying out of her head. Oh, she was malfunctioning. You know, so she goes, hard. I, I got to defend myself. I can say whatever I want. Yeah. Her teeth were chattering mm -hmm. and she was arguing for her First Amendment rights. And it's she's like, not. <laughs> just say sorry. Yeah. All you have to do is apologize. You were wrong. Like my, you know what? I'm so weird. To the point where I'm like, as long as you conduct yourself and you don't spew this hate to other people, you want to do this in front of your stupid ass friends, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I'm so fucked up like that. I'm like, yeah. just don't teach your kids this shit and don't do it out in public. If you want to be in your little fucking trailer park ass area, town, whatever, you yeah. want to do that to your trailer park friends, keep it there. I mean, that's what's so crazy about being out there that's what i was introduced this was the first month i was there oh, it's like i'm and definitely I'm at, not in la anymore yeah if you guys don't want safeway is vons or whatever fred my yeah. supermarket <laughs> look at the deli yeah, we have a safeway in uh, sacramento that's yeah what it's just like holy fucking shit like because literally they don't see people that look like me out mm -hmm. there 
you know, and I had to deal with that shit. <laughs> and I had to find a way to choose the love or the low road. I had like a weird moment too back in the day where I was introduced to this friend and I don't really like her. Because uh, <laughs> it was like one of those people that you meet through somebody else. It's like a hand me down friend, right. <laughs> you know, but she was such an odd person because she could only she could only understand like small little microaggressions or act of racism when it was towards her own culture. But when she would do it to somebody else, it was all good. So she couldn't laugh both ways. She would be okay making fun of somebody else's shit. But if you talked about her culture, she would get pissed. I'm like, right. you can't have it both ways. If we're, if we're friends here and you want to shit on Asian people, if I make a Mexican joke, you should laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, I'm talking about the first time I met her, right? Uh, we went on a rafting trip and she made like a, a fob joke, like fresh off a boat joke. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, this is probably how you came to this country. Hello, blah, blah, blah. And all this other shit, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, it's better than coming into an oil barrel that you came from the cartel, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then, you know, people laugh and she goes like, too far. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Too far. <laughs> what are you talking about, bitch? You just made an immigrant immigrant joke like I made an immigrant joke, yeah. right? It's like, this is where it gets weird now. It's like, how can you dish that much and then not take it? Yeah. I kept it in the same realm. Yeah. And then she goes, what we, well, unless like one of her family died from the cartel. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> oh, yeah. my bad. I had no idea. She goes, this is me. I came in an oil drum. And I'm like, <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> She looked. <laughs> she has a picture. You know. That's me. <laughs> you know, we had a moment like that too, where um, oh man, this is a weird story. We'll save this one for later. Right? Okay, <laughs> it goes okay. really long, but yeah, I, I always found it really weird when people couldn't take insults very well. Right? Yeah, I understand. You can get a little irritated when sometimes jokes go a little too far, but if you started it, somebody's always going to finish it. Yeah, you know. So there's always like this balance thing, and I found that out coming to here that a lot of people couldn't take. Mm. as well as they could dish out right just because i was always the butt of the joke in my in my group because i was the asian kid in a community full of black, right. black and mexican right. people so i had to say crazy shit just so i could be on par with people because asian jokes were so fucking easy and you were always at the tip of your toes yeah like, i had no. to be all the time but because they were so free with their asian jokes i was allowed to say whatever i want <laughs> you know so it allowed this like thing that's why i was able to laugh at a lot of things when people make fun of me now that's why i'm, I'm able to laugh at it a lot because I know that I could say something else back and hopefully you'll be able to laugh too. Mm. But if you can't and I make fun of you, then I just stop making jokes at all. I'm like, you're clearly somebody who is right. who cannot take a joke that feels like it's only allowed when you get to hurt somebody else. Right. But you can't take it yourself. And yeah. I hated that quality. Yeah, I see that in people when they don't know when to laugh. <laughs> Do you oh, ever yeah. feel that way? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And um, I don't know. It's It always seems to be a battle of morality and reading the room <laughs> mm. <laughs> or at, at the same time like um I, I think people have a hard time joking now because of the climate we're in oh cancel we culture does it a lot yeah yeah and so even i get caught up in someone saying what i should and shouldn't say but at the same time i'm like i'm not even fucking famous yeah shut the fuck <laughs> yeah. up i don't have i'm a freelancer and i have nothing to lose and i don't and if I work in corporate, I might hurt myself, you know? So it's just yeah, like, it's not like you're saying anything that's outlandish. Yeah. That's what we were talking about earlier with this movie. Like, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Some people can't handle the truth or some people can't accept the truth or have a skewed idea of what it is. And I'm, I'm even okay with people saying stuff that's offensive as long as it's in the right setting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, if I'm at a comedy club and they say some offensive shit, I'm like, Comedy club. Yeah. They're I know trying I, something. Yeah, they're trying something now. Yeah. It wasn't fun. I don't have to laugh at it. But I also have a choice not to be there. I have a choice not to laugh. Mm -hmm. But it's at a comedy club. So I'm like, mm, whatever. Move on. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not gonna make this whole post about it, get mad about it, because it was it's in the right setting. Because if you were to take that away from him to experiment, then you also lose out on that. You yeah, know, that privilege as well. And if it's you? hyper offensive and it doesn't work, he's going to take it out of his set. So I'll just leave it at that, you know, versus the lady who's at working at Safeway, mm -hmm. you know, serving fried chicken. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing, bitch? <laughs> Hello. This right yeah. here is a number four. Hey, don't worry because there's no MSG for you. Yeah. You know, like, I'm like, a part of me is kind of like, damn, that's really accurate. Man. And a no. part's like, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, that was the thing. I thought that there was a Chinese chef there. That's where I was halfway like hanging on like that was really good though mm -hmm. really good at it 
but you know, you that's know, why I came with the argument like, hey, you're at Safeway. You shouldn't do it at work. <laughs> yeah. You know, the funny thing is I blame Angela Johnson for that shit. Oh, man. Angela Johnson, when she did the Vietnamese nail salon lady right. thing, it was so good. It made me cry laughing, <laughs> right? But that gave a green light for every person and their mom to do a Vietnamese, a terrible Vietnamese accent because Angela Johnson does it really fucking well. That's why it's funny. Yeah. Russell Peters, Russell Peters does it just so good, and it's there's cultural nuance to it. He understands like the little inside jokes yeah. that makes it so funny. I'm even amazed at Dave Chappelle's Korean accent. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's pretty good, <laughs> yeah. dude. Have you heard Danielle Rawlings speak Korean? Yeah, <laughs> I've never died yeah. laughing so hard. He was watching... like stationed in Korea, right? <laughs> Yo, so did you watch Burt Kreischer's The Cabin? Uh... A little bit of it. You have to watch the one with Daniel Rollins, right? Okay. So there's this scene where it's Bobby Lee, Daniel Rollins, and Burt Kreischer. They're all laying down on the floor. <laughs> and they're pretending to be each other's father. Yeah. Right? And then fucking Bobby does a typical black dude voice, like a black father voice, right? <laughs> Daniel! What you doing, Daniel? <laughs> and then Daniel Rollins like, yo, that's fucked up. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I <laughs> fucking one shot. I was like, "What did he say?" He's like, "He's like, go eat shit, yeah. you bitch." In, in Korean. Korean, yeah. Oh, oh my, my gosh. god, so crazy, dude. Oh, crying, laughing. You know how I, uh, I say "shangnama fucking seki." Yeah, I got that from my friend Sean, that my half wife friend uh -huh. in Korea. That's what he would tell Korean kids. "Shangnama fucking." When seki. he would, when, cause he's, you know, he looks white. Uh huh. But when he was in Korea he, and he said Korean kids would talk shit about him mm -hmm. in Korean, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> So that's how what I learned from him. But Dan also pulled this off when we were in K Town. Um, some Norebang uh, at the Zion market or whatever. So it's the top floor, and now it's like after 2 or 4 a.m., whichever. And we're all getting in the elevator, right? And the elevator's getting packed and Dan's coming in and he's, he's a little tipsy. And then um, the elevator doors close, but then uh, it hits his butt and he goes, ooh, 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 I'm sorry. Ooh, 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 <laughs> right? And he's being like just Dan himself, yeah. right? And then this Korean girl in the elevator goes, oh, shikro, right? And then Dan looks at her and he goes, you shikro, you kijibeya. She has no idea. <laughs> and you she, she was so mortified. She put her hands on her red. face and like dropped down to the floor. Of course. Was, he's like, yeah, hangomar 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 Oh man, that's was... so fucking funny. I would die laughing if Dan did that. It's so hilarious when like people get caught like that. <laughs> Khalif has a great so you know Khalif's dad? So Khalif's Khalif is half Vietnamese, half half black, right? Yeah. His, his dad is the black side, his mom's the Vietnamese side. So his dad actually uh, learned how to speak Vietnamese fluently yeah. in order to communicate to his mom. I heard that on a very OG episode. <laughs> yeah. And then same shit. Like they were at the um at the liquor store or whatever, and he's like teaching the the one of the Vietnamese was teaching uh, Khalif how to say bad words and shit. And he's like, hey, don't teach my kid that stuff. And he just keeps doing it. And then he starts going off at him in Vietnamese. <laughs> and the dude's like, yo. <laughs> then they become best friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's just crazy, man. That's so funny oh, when people get caught with that shit. Yeah. And they just start going off. Because, you know, our my buddy Pat, he's like, he looks full white, but he's Mexican as fuck. <laughs> Wouldn't fucking know. And so he, he always hears shit. Yeah. But he can always go off whenever he wants because... They don't know he's Mexican. Yeah. That's so funny. I mean, uh, on the flip side too, like I've had customers like try to make me make fun of my mom and do an Asian accent for them. That's not just like, fuck you. And like, but then um, there are times when, um, I'm sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wrap again. up this episode, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we shot two episodes today, but... I hope you guys enjoyed that. Today we talked a lot about 
uh fucking everything man literally everything we were like what should we talk about and i don't think we covered we didn't any cover any of that shit, shit. we talked about <laughs> we talked about we jason chen being one. an asshole a little <laughs> cute little fucking pale fuck of him he's a good guy don't leave him alone yeah guys. we're just this is just funny friend stories yeah. that you guys get to hear this is all stuff that you guys probably ever heard before or you never heard but either way it's all the inside stories that you never get to hear about but yeah we talked about that we talked about people who don't have friends people who are socially <laughs> awkward and you'll run into a lot of these motherfuckers out of smaller towns. Small town people keep other people in check. Yeah. When you're in a big city, there's too many people to give a fuck about everybody. So you'll see a lot of this behavior. If, and I know like people who are listening to this who aren't from like these huge metropolitan cities are like, how the fuck do these people exist? It's because in a small town, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. You fuck up, everybody's going to hear about it. It keeps you in check. Yeah. You know? So uh, you can find Ed at Ed Park VP. Uh, you could see the Genius Brain. See, you could listen to the Genius Brain podcast every Thursdays and Sundays. We're on every audio platform out there. If you're not watching the video, watch it on your walk. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, are we drunk? A little bit. No, <laughs> watch it on your walk and enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Peace. And Peace. Park VP. <laughs> and Park VP. <laughs> I think you said DP. D VP. <laughs> I don't know. Double penetration. Double penetration. <laughs>